Hey everyone, I'm Matt here with Down to Trade. This is part two of my interview with Halcyon Trader. In this three-part series, we take a deep dive into the world of zero DTE trading strategies. Again, there was so much to cover, but we made every attempt to discuss several aspects of the strategy. And we did our best to consolidate as much information as possible into the short series. Now, if you haven't watched part one of the interview, I highly encourage you to stop this video and check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, part three will be released tomorrow. If you haven't done so already, I urge you to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell as well. That way you can be notified when the rest of the interview is released. So without further ado, let's get down to trading. So here's an interesting question. I know that comes up regularly when you talk okay. about zero DTE trading. And this is certainly, I think, from... Uh, there are different versions and reasons why you would do one over another. And there's always Absolutely. contextually, everything is in context, right? You can't, you can't take things out of context and put one little blanket statement on there and then assume that means the same thing for one thing versus another. So uh, the, for you and your strategy, you don't roll things, right? You, you have a set stop loss on your zero DTE, the way you take your trades, there's a set stop loss. And there's sometimes it's just on the short leg, sometimes it's on the entire spread. And there's, you know, kind of a decisioning factor that comes in depending on how the market's acting, whether or not it's the whole thing or just the short leg. Uh, and also I think at the earlier in the session, the a little bit easier it is to work on just the short leg side of it. But uh, so I'm for you, when you, you know, zoomed in because you're, we'll get into this in a minute, your performance and, and how that all, how that speaks for itself. But when you, uh, came to the point to decide, all right, would I ever want to roll this? I personally would never roll a 30 wide. That seems like way too much risk to take overnight personally. But um, for you, when you decide to land on a stop loss versus a rolling of that type of spread, uh, where, how, how can you talk through like how that worked out? I'm sure it was a math piece of that basis on the expected, you know, your expected profitability um, or your expected rewards over time. But how did you land on not rolling versus taking stop loss and a stop loss specifically at 3%. Uh, where, okay. where, how did that come to fruition? Well, okay. So, uh, to touch real quick on, on, on the beginning of, of uh, your question, uh, you, you kind of asked, or we, we were kind of talking about the, the, the strike widths. And I, I will say this, look, 30 wide strike width is, is, how can I say this? The most beneficial for my style of trading. In other words, the parameters that I have, the the, the contract size and the 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 deltas that I uh, that I look at. Now, obviously, I we you and I both know we have um, members in our in my down in our trade room at the down in the trade room that th some will do five strike with 10, 15, yeah. 20, 30. Um, I don't know if I haven't heard of anybody takes anything larger than 30 strike width. I think uh, that's, that's usually about the cap that we see at least see in our, in our trade room, but there's nothing inherently wrong with any of those. Uh, but if you're going to take a, a, a five strike width, that's going to absolutely change um, other parameters and it, which is fine. There's, you, you can, you can make a winning, um, you can make a winning strategy out of different strike width. Absolutely. But um, as far as, the management of the trade. One, I didn't like the idea of rolling, especially never to another day. Um, I, um, when I first started out, we were only trading, there were only three expiration days available, obviously. Yeah. Um, and then later, as you stated last May, uh, May of 2022, uh, they, they began introducing uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays um, as possible expirations for the SPX. But sure. Um, it, it, at that time, I was I was trying out some one DTE uh, yep. trades and some zero DTE trades, and what I noticed is that the the benefit of of rolling to a one DTE didn't really work with a thirty wide strike. It, and it, how can I say this? The, the the risk increased too much rolling to a one DTE. For the uh, for the possible reward. In other words, you, you're you're increasing your your risk re reward profile um, semi substantially just by um, adding that one more day because we have now we're introducing um, overnight risk, um, mm -hmm. overnight risk of these large moves, and these over this overnight risk would introduce the possibility of opening up a uh, the, the following day 
far beyond your, you know, where it could gap far beyond uh, your strikes. And so th this introduced an element of risk that I felt was nowhere near worth uh, the same reward. So I, I, I could potentially be taking my, my, my risk, my, my three to one or two to one risk reward profile and turning it into a possible five or six to one risk reward profile. And that just wasn't worth it to me. So I, I would, I never considered rolling to a, another day, but I would do a vertical roll. Um, I do have a, a set of, uh, I do have some rules in our guidebook uh, that talk about when we do roll uh, or we do choose But you always to roll, roll in the same day, like roll up in and the roll same down, day, depending correct. on what you're doing. Yep. Exactly. I might take that spread. Now I will never, I will say this, I will never ever roll for a debit. It will never happen. Um, I can't imagine a scenario where that would actually be um, beneficial. So what I do is instead I, I will roll for a credit if I'm profitable on that spread. Now I, I will not, in other words, I won't roll when I'm in trouble. I won't roll when a spread is in, is in danger of being stopped out. Um, but I will roll to, to a, a spread that is making money or is profitable. I will choose to roll that to squeeze a little bit more um, credit out of the market if, if I can. So to be, and to be clear, for those that are hearing that when he's talking about rolling, um, he, so imagine you put a, initially a 3,900 put credit spread started, right? And then when you, when he's talking about rolling it to him, it's not rolling for defending, it's rolling for offense. So he's rolling it up a little closer as price continue to run away. More often than not, this happens when I would take a guess, this happens when you either a, you have a set target, say it was trying to get 95 cents or a dollar oh five for the day. And the, the first spread, you were able to grab 70 and you need another 30 to, right. to get the additional 105, to get the goal, the, the goal amount for the day, assuming the market is giving you um, the right indications internally. And the main things you're looking at are screaming, it's going to keep going up. You'll right. roll it up a little bit closer to try to grab that additional 30 cents uh, to right. Now, obviously, you don't want to be overly aggressive about this. And I've, I've, I've seen some other internet zero DTE, um, for back of, a lack of a better term, gurus out there who are very, 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 very aggressive about their positions. And I used to be as well. When I first started out, I, I mean, if you look at my, my journal from 2021, I was taking anywhere between five and 12 trades a day. Um, and mm -hmm. I was just very aggressive, constantly rolling, adjusting. And now, I mean, you see it's, one trade, two trades. Yeah. It's, I'm very, it's very relaxed, very, um, you know, I, the perfect day for us would, uh, we're in and out in about 10 minutes um, and we're done for the day. We made our goal and it's just very, we, 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 yeah, we, we, we made our profit target and we walk away and go golfing for the rest of the day Adios. And without, without that feeling of, or, or, or an urge to try to get back in and get more. Sure. But yes, we, uh, we're we're very much non-aggressive in in our approach anymore, and um, we we let the statistics um, uh, play out in our favor. But uh, you and I have discussed this at length, and what uh, an idea that I try to really um, uh, get down the get down the pike when it comes to our members is when you're considering a defensive posture or an offensive posture. The real trick is to not Think of yourself in a position because if you think of yourself as being in a position that you're, you're starting to lose money on, if you consider yourself still in the position, you can. Uh, it, what often happens is that you you make an emotional adjustment or you make an emotional trade. Oh, oh no, it's going against me real quick. Uh, let me just dive into uh, the uh, the opposing spread as quick as I can. And sure, what the 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 real uh, the, the most beneficial mindset to have is consider it as if you're not in a position. And try to read the market right now in this moment as if you're not in any position. Do I think the market's going to go up, down, or sideways from right now at this position? You, granted, you might be in a bull put spread that's and the market is 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 chasing down towards your uh, towards your strike. And you, you you what I try to teach people is to make make every attempt to hide those emotions or 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 seat those emotions quickly and just try to read the market as it is. Do I think it's going to reverse? Do I think it's going to continue to go sideways or, uh, or down? Or do I think it's going to uh, go sideways? And if you can effectively remove yourself mentally from the trade or the position that you're in right now, 
then you can make the decision of how to properly manage the trade that you're in. But it's a tough, mm -hmm. it's, it's a simple, simple approach. It's just not easy to do emotionally, right? Because when you're in the trade, you're, you're seeing, uh, you're seeing that you're in the red a little bit. And you, instead of reacting, I try to encourage people to not react, but to read the market, read the market internals. Like we often discuss, read, read the, uh, in other words, pretend that you're not in a position and what would you do right now if you had to get into a position? And based on that, then you make a calculated decision on how to either defend or, or uh, go offensive. Does that kind of make, make sense? I don't know if I- Yeah, it makes total sense. Makes total okay. sense. Um, so I'm curious for you, you met, you a little bit touched on this. Uh, during the, so during the trade day, right? You, you, you start your, your trading day. And what would you say are the tools that are most effective for you when you're looking at reading? Uh, so when you're taking into, into, into concert all the things that need to be taken into place before you make a trade, what are the main tools you look at to help identify where am I in the trade? And if you can, if you want, you can share your screen and you know show okay. that on the on trading view if that's easier. But if um, yes. <laughs> just out of curiosity, what... What are like the, you, you, you would not take a trade unless you were able to see these three things or four things. What would the, what are those, what are those for you? Okay. So yeah, if you don't mind, let me go ahead and uh, share my screen. Sure. Give you me one quick second. Yep. And Joe, you're very familiar with this because this is, this is a screen I have the up and time. running every day. <laughs> um, yep. Just to give you an idea for those of you, oh, here, let me kind of move that out of the way. Just, just to give you an idea of, of how we do things in the room um, so you know how to read these. Um, I begin, so I, on every entry, I'll draw a line um, starting from my where I answered and it will terminate at the point of expiration. So obviously uh, yesterday, for instance, this was, this was, this vertical line is at four o'clock uh, PM um, Eastern time. So this is the line, the vertical line uh, displaying the, the close of day. And this line was at the 4095. Now this is, I only show the short leg of the spread. And so right here, you can see that we got into the 4095 and you can, so obviously at 41.25 was my long leg. But again, I don't draw that line here. Um, I only show the short leg here. And then I draw a reference line from um, the candle at entry all the way to the point of expiration. And I, I, I write some notes here about the credit I received and the debit at, at close. And then obviously my net return um, for that spread. So and that's just to give you an idea. Obviously, yesterday we got into two spreads. Um, yesterday was kind of a tough day, and we only ended up. I, I didn't actually meet my my goal for the day. I, I chose to cut it off a little bit early. We only I only closed the day at 075 percent. But so what I look at throughout the day, I look at it several things. We we certainly. Hey, uh, let me just touch on one point quick too before as you're jumping into that. Um, to, just so you guys are aware, uh, Amet is doing this. You you can see this screen in real time. So this isn't like, this is something behind the scenes. He's watching, posting these notes, putting this in. He's literally sharing this screen and then verbalizing his thoughts as he as we're going through the day and watching the day do whatever the day is doing. Um, so you can in real time literally hear him and listen to him. Uh, all right, hey, I'm looking at, you know, this whatever it is the the 4095 uh you know short leg here on for a, a bear credit spread here you know a call credit spread i'm looking at doing that right now all right i'm going to enter this order here i go you know like you can watch them and listen to do this in real time um you know again i think that's something is worth a ton of value when you look at the way the um the way it's done in a lot of traditional discord and or other service type things is it's just you're getting lots of um, here's a notification of a trade that's being taken or has been taken, you know, take it if you want. Uh, and I think the super value here is you can hear somebody who does this for a living talk through 
every aspect of why they're taking what they're taking, what try, you know, what price action they're looking for, uh, what kind of setup is presenting and what is ideal for the next particular trade to take. Uh, anyway, sorry. So I think that's a, just a point. No, it, it, where it, people that's actually, that. you know, it, that's actually a really good point because when I first started out, um, you know, teaching uh, friends and colleagues be way, well before my, um, uh, I started teaching zero DTE to the public. Um, I actually used to have this this set syllabus, and I would try to teach teach traders the aspects of the trade, you know, by following a set syllabus. Mm -hmm. And th they were actually the ones my my students were actually the ones who said, you know, to be honest with you, it, the the strategy is easy. What we'd rather hear is your thought process throughout the day. And so I, I I stopped teaching the strategy and just started talking. I, I mean, I, I still teach the strategy, but I just talk out loud what I'm thinking as I'm seeing it. And my what I noticed, I, I didn't think that that was going to be effective. I didn't think that that's what they, um, that my students would actually want to hear is, is, is my thought process. Because, I mean, I, I think my thought process is boring, but <laughs> they, they started, they started vocalizing that that's what they wanted. They, they only want, they really, really wanted to hear when I saw something occurring, let's say with the U S dollar or with uh, the advanced client line, or um, when, when I started seeing uh, news events occur, they wanted to hear my thoughts out loud. And, and again, that was kind of a surprise to me. So, but that's what I began to do I, per their request. Yep. You know, if, if I started seeing divergence pop up between, um, you know, some oscillator and, and the SPX or the dollar and the tick, and I, I'm, I'm watching the, the, uh, the divergence happen in real time, instead of teaching them, this is how you read divergence. They just wanted me to talk about what I'm seeing, the divergence I'm seeing in real time. So I began to do that. And man, talk about a, an eye-opening experience for me to, to see the, the, the growth and understanding of my, of, of the members or my students at that time, because sure. it, it's, it, I got away from theory and we, we got into this, this world or this realm of practical application in real, real time. Um, so it, it, I, I guess that's, uh, that's why I, I do it in this, in this fashion is I feel like sometimes I'm just babbling on and on and on, but it, it, this is what my students have have expressed to me is the most beneficial for them when it comes to learning um, is not me sitting here and, and teaching theory, but me just saying, okay, well, I see a little bit of divergence here. And, and, and after a few days of that, you, you, you see the students, they start picking it up and, and, and they start, they start being able to see these different aspects of the trade on their own. And that, sure. that's, it's, it's really, sure. really cool to watch anyways. Um, so, so your favorite tools, yeah. What are you, what what are so as you unpack your chart, we're seeing here, you've got you know, so you got some red lines in there. You've got uh, an oscillator in the okay, bottom. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's. Uh, obviously, um, I'm not a huge fan of technical analysis anymore. I I I I, I was introduced into trading um, via 100% technical analysis. However, um, I've I've slowly gone away from. Um, the idea of only using technical analysis in, in my trades. So there, there, I do have several aspects of technical analysis that I still use, um, but um, I'm really big on support and resistance. If you're able to read support and resistance, um, then I, I feel that you could be an effective trader. Now, I typically draw my lines of support and resistance on the 30-minute chart, looking at the SPX uh, on the 30-minute chart or the one-hour chart. And it's going to look kind of weird here because I'm not, um, I draw my support resistance just like anybody draws their support and resistance. Um, and it, I, they usually just stay there for a while. And I just, um, I don't really have to make adjustments all too often, but once in a while I'll go through and make adjustments as, as I see fit. Uh, but it, probably the, the biggest uh, or the, the first aspect of my trade would be, uh, effectively utilizing support and resistance again from the 30 minute and one one hour charts. Um, after that, I, Joe, as you know, I I trade on the one minute chart. I know a lot of people um, will trade on the five or 15 minute chart on zero DTE, uh, yep. which is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with it um, at all. I'm just so used to watching the one minute chart now that I think the uh, to change that at this point would be uh, would just be, have a negative effect on my trade. 
Um, but I suit, I do see the benefit of trading the five minute chart. I really do. Um, but again, I'm so used to one to the one minute chart. I, I don't want to make the, the change myself. Um, so as you know, I trade news events as well. And so we're really big on, um, th there's a couple different places I get my news from. Uh, for instance, um, I do get my news from uh, two, di two different calendars. Uh, the first one being Forex Factory calendar. Yeah, um, we love that one here. Yep. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, it, 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 it is fantastic. It doesn't have everything typically. Um, so what I'll do is, you know, at the Forex uh, Factory calendar, if uh, you're new to it, what I do is, I will uh, up here, I can, I'll filter out every other uh, currency group except for the US dollar. I only look at the US dollar currency group, but I'll look at all event types. Oh, that's nice. I don't, I, I have them all listed on there. So I'm more like, great. I'm glad I'm going to learn what's happening in you know the Aussie world, but uh, I mean, irrelevant to me. <laughs> Thanks for that. It, tip. it just, it gets a little bit too uh, encumbered when, when yeah, you yeah, uh, have them all there. there. Yep. So I, I do choose to, uh, like I said, narrow it down to just the U.S. dollar. Um, the other calendar that I use is Financial Juice. Um, okay. Now, Financial Juice it typically is much more inclusive of right, of news than Forex Factory. Uh, okay. Most of the time, you'll see you'll see things here that are not on Forex Factory. Uh, sometimes you'll see, see the opposite where you'll, you'll find things on Forex factory that are not on financial juice. Well, so anyways, um, I definitely do my best to, uh, to watch both and I'm, I'm looking for news events that, that are, that I believe will possibly move the market or in introduce, um, implied volatility or volatility into the market. Sure. Um, so, and this is another aspect that I, I, I realize that my members absolutely love. They, they they tell me quite often that they love hearing me talk about the market. I thought for sure no one was going to want to hear me talk about uh, news events, um, but uh, apparently uh, the members love it, and that they they like to hear my my take on the market or the the Fed versus you know inflation versus the bond market, inf inflation uh, versus um, you know, um, the employment uh, reports uh, that are sure. coming out versus, um, you know, it, the effects on uh, the, the stock market, the effects on the bond market and, and the relationship. And once you understand the, um, the, how the machine works, you don't actually have to understand why the machine works, but um, it, it's kind of cool to see how members kind of begin to grasp the 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 machine the machinery of the economy uh, the economic machine and how it works just by hearing me talk about it out loud um so that's kind of cool but yeah so these two calendars i look at all day every day um another one thing that i look at is uh the whitehouse.gov slash live um site and we we try to track you know different events that are going to be coming out of out of the white house uh throughout the day because, you know, and, and we, we try to interpret whether or not we think that event will um, move the market. For instance, today, there's, there's a talk at um, 2 p.m. Eastern time, um, and it's about the International Women Courage um, uh, Award Ceremony. Now, I, looking at that, I would have no reason to believe that that would have any effect on the, on the, the market. So I would discount that as a mover of the market. So you, you begin to, to learn to read different aspects of these news events and you, you begin to gain an idea uh, just by listening in, uh, in on the, uh, the trade room, you begin to get an idea of how those events will actually move the market. So, so we have, we have uh, support and resistance, we have news catalysts, and then finally we have what I call market internals or what, what is called market internals. Now market internals is a, is a series of, could you bring your, uh, your trading view back up to show oh, us? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So now, unfortunately, I don't have all my market internals here uh, up in trading view. Uh, most of them are um, a on, a, <laughs> uh, on a different monitor. Speaking of, I have. really important question here. How many monitors are you working with? 
<laughs> the, 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 the most important question for any trader, right? How many monitors do you have? Um, so I, I, I trade with three monitors and right. on a completely separate monitor, I do have, um, trade, I'm sorry, uh, thinkorswim and thinkorswim is where I have a lot of my other, um, uh, charts up, but okay. on this one, the, probably the most important internals that I watch are certainly the U S dollar. Now the U S dollar is typically um, negatively correlated to the SPX. In other words, as one moves up, the other is going to move down, correct? And we're all mm -hmm. well aware of that. But what I've done on TradingView, just to make things a little bit easier, um, because we look for a divergence between the two. Now, fully understanding that the US dollar, again, is negatively correlated to the SPX, what I've chosen to do is invert it. So this is how it normally... Um, how it would normally look yep. uh, if you were to type if you were to type in dxy on uh, into your one of your charts and you compare it to your spx you'll notice that as the spx is going down the the dollar should be going up well what i've chosen to do is to invert this chart so now they should be more correlated together so in other words as one goes down the other should be going down and we I really teach, I, tr I do my best to teach uh, this theory of divergence between the US dollar and the SPX because, excuse me, we all know that as, as money moves out of the stock market, in other words, as selling begins to occur in the stock market, um, uh, we should see, because there's a, there's a competition between um, supply between the, these two assets, we should start seeing the dollar rise. Well, in, in an inverted dollar, we should see them go in the same direction. And so we'll, we'll use the divergence uh, between these two assets to predict the movement of the dollar. And um, it, it's kind of a, it, it, it's probably the most, or the, the closest thing we have to a leading indicator um, is this divergence between the dollar and the SPX. Granted, there is no such thing as a, as a true leading indicator, but this is uh, by far the, the, the closest thing we probably have to it um, as, is the divergence we have between the US dollar and the SPX. So I, I do spend a lot of the time talking about um, the divergence between these two. Uh, in fact, uh, we're probably gonna start seeing something happen here pretty soon. But anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I, I won't get in. I won't do a deep dive into it right now. <laughs> yeah, you um, can stare into a chart chat and, and be, you know, right. <laughs> three hours anyway, later. Um, yeah, that's awesome. All right. So I, then you, I, you I got do, the, new, the cumulative tick there that's showing up as well. Correct. I, I, on, in trading view, I watched the cumulative tick. Um, in, on trading view, I watch um, the regular tick and I also watch the, the tick on the cues. I'm gotcha. sorry. Yeah, on Think or Swim, I watch the uh, the regular tick and I watch the uh, the tick on the cues as well. Um, now, give me a second. Um, and I, I just have the regular. Uh, the, I, I I watch for different levels uh, to occur on the tick. Yeah. Um, you'll see here I have the 400, the 600, and the 1,000 marked off. Obviously, the blue line is my zero line, and then I have this, uh, the same for the, the, the negative direction. Sure. Um, obviously, the same type of read that we're probably all used to, anything above a negative, or anything above the 1,000 um, is a signal of a, a, a good bullish direction or good bullish trend and anything sure. below negative 1,000. We're, we're all very aware of that. I do use this range between four and 600 um, as a as a possible signal to exit a trade. Um, I, I've, I have a, a guideline I use for that, um, I, but I, I, I typically don't really care about this, this range too much uh, between four and 600. But in my guidebook, I do talk about a signal that we do use for um, as a signal to exit a trade um, that, that has possibly gone against you. Um, the E-mini, I do watch uh, the E-mini and um, I'm really big on volume profile on the E-mini. I do not think that the volume profile is as, as effective um, on the SPX, but on the futures, um, I believe it is, uh, it, 
it is actually a very effective tool that that, that should be added to uh, your toolbox. Uh, this volume profile, I think it's fantastic yep. on e mini. So we leave it there, and we're, we're const- obviously we're constantly looking for um, your your points of control, um, and uh, yeah, obviously uh, uh, historical points of control as well. Um, yep. I also do on here. Here, let me kind of expand this one. I also do draw in um, pockets of liquidity as um, as supply and demand zones. Uh, you'll see me do that uh, throughout the day, typically on the five minute or um, I don't draw them in on the five minute chart. I watch it on the five minute chart, but I'll typically draw them on the four hour, three hour, two hour, one hour and 30 minute charts. Uh, I'll just kind of uh, look for them here. And once I find a pocket of liquidity, I'll draw it. In, I'll draw it out um, here again. These are these are different pockets that that I see of possible liquidity um, points throughout the day. Um, and, and I use these stuff. as yeah, possible amazing. support and resistance. Yeah. Um, um I, again, I, you've, you've noted several times I'm very big on support and resistance. Um, just because I know how much the, the SPX loves to respect support and resistance. It just really does. Um, and what, it, what I typically try to tell people, what I did, Look, I'm 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 not the world's greatest trader, not even close. But I'm, where I used to be a generalist, in other words, I used to trade so many different stocks and so many different um, options. You know, I would I would watch AMD, Tesla, Facebook. You know, I, I would watch the same the same stocks that everybody else would would watch. But I was never really great at any one of them because I was constantly flipping between charts over and over and over and over and over. I know trying to know what each of those stocks was doing. But now I only watch one chart all day long and i have for the last two years and this is the only chart i watch and so i've become kind of a specialist at the spx and um oftentimes you'll hear people say how did you know the market was going to do that like uh even yesterday um i was saying you know that the market's probably going to try to come down to the 4014s and kind of chop sideways into the afternoon and i i, I kind of drew that out for everybody in the room i kind of drew out this this line yeah. of coming down to the the 4014s and it was just going to kind of do that in the afternoon and people often say how do you how did you know it was going to do that well i don't know obviously i i don't know anything that's going to happen but i've become very accustomed to the spx only because i've, I've kind of become a specialist at it it's the only thing i watch okay so that's the end of part two I encourage you to watch out for part three of the interview as we continue to dive head first into more aspects of the zero dte trade as always, if you have any questions about the Down to Trade room, please visit us at downtotrade.com or check out our Discord channel. I'll leave a link in the description below. Right now, we're offering a no risk one week free trial for our Down to Trade room, which includes several fantastic perks. And not only that, but we're also currently offering a gigantic discount for the membership. So come check us out. Well, that's it for now. I can't wait to see you all in the room. Take care, everyone. Happy trading.